In 1956, Winston Churchill, in one of his books, wrote that King James was much addicted to his favorites, and his attention to handsome young men resulted in a noticeable loss of respect for the monarchy. I'm referring to the man whose Bible is the most printed book in the world. He was an avowed homosexual and extremely proud of it. His first public male relationship came at age 13 with Esme Stewart. It was said that James became in such love with him as in the open sight of the people often he would clasp him around the neck with his arms and kiss him. The king's final and favorite bedmate was George Villiers, whom James not only elevated to great political power, but also fondly referred to as his wife. The king's relationship with George Villiers, whom he later made the Earl of Buckingham, lasted from 1614 until King James died 13 years later. According to historians, the two men were notorious for their kissing and caressing of one another in public, and their heedless contempt for public opinion contributed to the civil crisis enveloping the nation. In 1617, just three years into his final same-sex relationship, the man who many credit with producing a perfect Bible spoke the following unblushing words before his parliament. I, James, am neither a god nor an angel, but a man like any other. Therefore, I act like a man and confess to loving those dear to me more than other men. You may be sure that I love the Earl of Buckingham more than anyone else, and more than you who are here assembled. I wish to speak in my own behalf, and not to have it thought to be a defect. For Jesus Christ did the same, and therefore I cannot be blamed. Christ had John, and I have George. James had little to no interest in women, but he did marry by proxy simply to acquire a few heirs to the throne. After obtaining those three children, King James ditched his wife Anne in 1607, having nothing more to do with her from there on. The same year he ditched his wife, James met his second lover and bedfellow Robert Carr. That relationship happened to bloom right at the very same time King James was so involved in writing his new holy Bible. The fact that King James lived a life of sodomy must have influenced the men he enlisted to help him come up with a new Bible. We find evidence for that in one particular verse, 1 Corinthians 6, 9. There, Paul was warning about the sin of sodomy using Strong's Greek word 733. Well, the people at the time already had a wonderful Bible called the Geneva Bible. It was extremely accurate and happened to use the same translation of the New Testament that King James chose, the Tyndale translation. So one might expect that Paul's warning against sodomy would appear pretty much the same in both versions, but that's not what happened. The Geneva Bible accurately translated that word for sodomites as boogerers, which in the 1500s meant sodomite or one who engages in anal sex. The guys working for James, however, apparently didn't want to anger their sodomite boss by using any direct reference to sodomites, so they completely fabricated the phrase, abusers of themselves with men. They plugged that phrase right where a word should have been and ingeniously avoided hitting too close to home with their boss, King James. That was not the only time translators substituted correct words with vague or even incorrect words in order to please the king. James instructed his men to help him promote church power hierarchy by interjecting wherever they could concepts like office, ruling over other believers, and obeying those in charge. Concepts clearly nowhere in the original text text. Translators followed the king's orders, and today we can trace how well they followed those orders. But as far as we can tell, King James never interjected homosexual references or any types of word vulgarities into his finished Bible. The narrative was written in a pretty conservative but elegant style, which until a few years ago would have certainly received a family-friendly G rating for its content and its language. However, today that has all changed. The protection over scriptures, which God described to Daniel apparently has been lifted as God had told Daniel it would be there until the end. We are clearly at the end. Satan does have permission to tamper with our Bibles and that is exactly what he is doing. The same King James Bible I received as a child now contains positive references to homosexuality, vulgar words, and outright obscenities. I certainly
certainly didn't put them there. So how did they get there? If you look in any of your King James Bibles, old or new, you'll find them in your copies as well. Too hard to believe? I would have thought the same thing until I saw them with my own eyes. You're about to see them with your own eyes. Hi, I'm Dolly Weber. Our Bibles are no longer safe for any child to read. Here are verses and the specific words they contain that you probably would not want your child to read or look up meanings for on the internet. You'll then see how each verse used to read when the King James Bible was still kid-friendly. First, homosexual desire. Joseph of Arimathea craved the body of Jesus. In Mark 15, 43, we read, Joseph of Arimathea, an honorable counselor, which also waited for the kingdom of God, came and went in boldly unto Pilate and craved the body of Jesus. No, Joseph merely asked for the body of Christ. Paul longed for believers in his bowels. According to Philippians 1, 8, we read, For God is my record, how greatly I long after you all in the bowels of Jesus Christ. No, Paul longed for the believers with the affection of Jesus Christ. Male homosexuality does not keep a man out of heaven. Luke 17, 34 reads, I tell you, in that night there shall be two men in one bed. The one shall be taken and the other shall be left. No, it was two people in a bed, clearly implying a husband and a wife. Female homosexual activity does not keep a woman out of heaven. In Luke 17, 35, we read, Two women shall be grinding together. The one shall be taken and the other left. No, this verse used to read that two women were grinding grain together. The bowels of the saints were refreshed by Philemon. In Paul's letter to Philemon, we see three different references to this homosexual inference. First, verse 7, For we have great joy and consolation in thy love, because the bowels of the saints are refreshed by thee, brother. Verse 12, Whom I have sent again, thou therefore receive him, that is, mine own bowels. Verse 20, Yea, brother, let me have joy of thee in the Lord. Refresh my bowels in the Lord. Yet in all these instances, the word was hearts and not bowels. The hearts of the saints were refreshed by Philemon. And here's a curious thing. The words sodomy, homosexual, and homosexuality no longer even exist in the King James Version of the Bible. We find simply crude and even vulgar references to things that were found in scripture before but used to be described in a cleaner way. What does vulgar actually mean? As you can see here, in a general sense, vulgar means lacking sophistication or good taste unrefined. But as it pertains to the body or to sex specifically, it means making explicit and offensive reference to sex or bodily functions. Synonyms for vulgar are rude, indecent, distasteful, risque, suggestive, coarse, or rude. To describe it another way, it means to carelessly reference something in a public way which was intended to be private or privately shared. For instance, wounded in the stones. Deuteronomy 23.1 reads, he that is wounded in the stones or hath his privy member cut off, shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord. The word was eunuch, not wounded in the stones. In Exodus 33, 23, we read, And I will take away mine hand, and thou shalt see my back parts, but my face shall not be seen. Well, the passage simply said, Then I will take away my hand, and you shall see my back ass couching. Genesis 49 14 reads, Issachar is a strong ass couching down between two burdens. Well, isn't that cute? The verse used to read, Issachar is a strong donkey lying down between the saddlebags. And we have the new word chode. In Genesis 31 36 we read, And Jacob was wroth and chode with Laban. And in Numbers 20 verse 3 we find the same new word. And the people chode with Moses. Chode Chode is a new word. Anyone, adult or child, looking that word up would find one and only one meaning. A penis that is wider than it is long. The people quarreled with Moses. Even if they had used the word chide, the past form would be chided, not chode. Impotent man. Whoever is making these Bible changes enjoys using the word impotent. For instance, in John 5, 3, we read, In these lay a great multitude of impotent folk, and Acts 14, 8, and there sat a certain man at Lystra, impotent in his feet. In all these cases, either the word sick or invalid has now been replaced with impotent.
omnipotent dung it. In Luke 13, 8, we read the passage of the owner of the vineyard finding a fig tree that is about to die. The vine dresser pleads with the owner to give him one more year to work with the tree before chopping it down. And the verse reads, And he answering said unto him, Lord, let it alone this year also, till I shall dig about it and dung it. This verse reads as though a teenage boy was just joking after being asked to read the verse out loud. No, the vine dresser said he would fertilize it. He certainly did not say, let me dung it. Four skins would be uncovered. In Habakkuk 2.16 we read, Thou art filled with shame for glory. Drink thou also, and let thy foreskin be uncovered. The cup of the Lord's right hand shall be turned unto thee, and shameful spewing shall be on thy glory. This verse did not specifically talk about the foreskin, but in a clean, family-friendly way referred to the man's shame, which of course referred to his not being circumcised. A whoring. Exodus 34, 15 reads, Lest thou make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land, and they go a whoring after their gods, and do sacrifice unto their gods, and one call thee, and thou eat of his sacrifice. And thou take of their daughters unto thy sons, and their daughters go a whoring after their gods, and so forth. It simply spoke of the daughters playing the harlot with the other gods, not a whoring we will go. Piss. This word, too, is considered vulgar, as it pertains to private bodily functions in an explicit, coarse, offensive way. It appears in two identical verses now in our King James Bibles, replacing the word urine. The first of those verses contains the two words, unto them, which the other verse does not. I'll read that verse. But Rabshakeh said unto them, Hath my master sent me to thy master, and to thee, to speak these words? Hath he not sent me to the men which sit on on the wall that they may eat their own dung and drink their own piss with you? The verse used to have the word urine, as you can see in one of these other translations. Then we have two instances of the word pisseth. Not only is this reference also very vulgar, but the word pisseth presents the word piss in a completely phony way. The word piss was not even used by the English until long after they even added eth to the verb as I'll show you. The two verses containing this completely phony verb are 1 Kings 21.21 and 2 Kings 9.8. Behold, I will bring evil upon thee, and I will take away thy posterity, and will cut off from Ahab him that pisseth against the wall. And for the whole house of Ahab shall perish, and I will cut off from Ahab him that pisseth against the wall. Well, before I go on, let me just make mention that none of the other trans translations even talk about urinating at all. So clearly this verse was just plopped there for fun. Well, we know not our fun, but someone else's fun. Adding ETH to a word was common for Old English and also for Middle English. But Old English had died off by 1150 AD and Middle English had been replaced by the late 1400s. The King James Bible was written in what we call early modern English. Adding ETH to third person singular present tense was no longer used used in typical narratives in early modern English. Only for poetry or serious applications such as eulogies or legalese would anyone still use ETH. So if the word piss were used, it would simply appear as pisses. The word piss, however, does have quite an assortment of other vulgarities associated with it, more than obvious. According to the 1796 edition of the Dictionary of the Vulgar Tongue by Francis Gross, there are several negative connotations for the word piss further reasons why the word would never have appeared in the King James text. Those meanings include squandering money, a drunk, a piss prophet who tries to diagnose illness based on a person's urine. The term also refers to an erection and also to gonorrhea. You can see the screenshot from that book here. Using the verb piss in our Bibles is just as vulgar as any other four-letter vulgarity. Imagine other four-letter vulgarities using that same ETH. They they too go back a few hundred years and contain specific meanings, yet to use them in a family-friendly context of the Bible would be no more vulgar than using the word piss. To add eth to those words would be no more out of place than using the word pisseth. Readers, beware. If you honestly think that pisseth belongs in your Bible, 
than you've been had. Cross-dressing. Jesus was given a gorgeous robe right before they killed him. In Luke 23, 11, we read, And Herod, with his men of war, set him at naught and mocked him, and arrayed him in a gorgeous robe, and sent him again to Pilate. Well, Jesus was given a purple robe, according to the original account, purple denoting royalty, which was a sign of mockery against him. Girdles and bonnets. In Exodus 28, 40, we read about girdles and bonnets on men making them beautiful. The verse reads, And for Aaron's sons thou shalt make coats, and thou shalt make for them girdles, and bonnets shalt thou make for them, for glory and for beauty. Leviticus 8.13 describes Moses dressing the men with coats, girdles, and bonnets, claiming that God told him to do it. And believe it or not, the Spanish version of this last verse refers to actual tiaras. No, it was tunics, sashes, and caps to make them with dignity and honor, not glory glory and beauty. Wearing a bra. In Revelation 1.13, we read one of the most disturbing examples of cross-dressing references as it refers to Jesus himself. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girt about the paps with a golden girdle. The word paps, as you can see here, clearly refers to breasts in other scriptures where it is used. And by the Strong's definition, you can see that the word refers to breasts or even male nipples. No, it did not read girt about the paps, but it read a golden sash across his chest. Rings and bracelets. In Genesis 38 verse 18 we read, And he said, What pledge shall I give thee? And she said, Thy signet and thy bracelets and thy staff that is in thine hand. And he gave it to her and came in unto her and she conceived by him. No, that actually read your seal, its cord, and the staff in your hand. Paul was wrapped in thongs. In Acts 22, verse 25, we read, And as they bound him with thongs, Paul said unto the centurion that stood by, Is it lawful for you to scourge a man that is a Roman and uncondemned? The verse used to simply read that they stretched him out to flog him. Gay clothing. In James 2, 3, we read, And ye have respect to him that weareth the gay clothing, and say unto him, Sit thou here in a good place, and say to the poor, Stand thou there, or sit here under my footstool. No, it described people wearing fine clothes. And finally, we have unholy references, which add sexual connotation where it was not there before. Jacob not only wrestled a man and not an angel, but that man touched Jacob in a sexual way. In Genesis 32, 24 and 25, we read, And Jacob was left alone, and there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. And when he, the other man, saw that he prevailed not against him, Jacob, he touched the hollow of his thigh, Notice all these he, 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 he. So I have to interject to you which one it's talking about. This was never there before. But anyway, getting back to the story. And he, the man, touched the hollow of Jacob's thigh. And the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. Well, all translations now say that it was just a man. However, the King James Version describes the man touching Jacob in a location which easily refers to his genitals, the hollow of his thigh, as you can see here. Here robes cut up to the buttocks. In 2 Samuel 10, 4, we read, Wherefore Hanan took David's servants and shaved off the one half of their beards and cut off their garments in the middle, even to their buttocks, and sent them away. It used to read in a less blatant way, in the midst as far as their haunches. Fathers nurse children. In Isaiah 49, 23, we read, And kings shall be thy nursing fathers, and their queens thy nursing mothers. That verse used to read, And kings shall be your foster fathers. Men's breasts fill up with milk. In Job 21, 24, we read, his breasts are full of milk and his bones are moistened with marrow. That verse used to merely say that his body is well nourished. Discover the women's secret parts. In Isaiah 3, 17, we read, therefore the Lord will smite with a scab the crown of the head of the daughters of Zion, and the Lord will discover their secret parts. The passage used to merely speak of causing the women's scalps to go bald. This Bible change is actually stating something very obscene. Discover means to lay bare or expose, and the secret parts here refers to a woman's pudendum or external genitals. A man's little finger is bigger than his father's loins. Here we have two absolutely word-for-word -word identical verses. What in the world is going on? The synoptic gospels conveyed the same events in their own words, but the King James Bible 
Bible until today never had literally identical verses like we see going on. They usually occur in those instances where we find strange sexual or vulgar references as well. Here you see 1 Kings 12 10 and 2 Chronicles 10 10 saying the exact same thing. And the young men that were brought up with him spake unto him saying, Thus shalt thou answer the people that spake unto thee, saying, Thy father made our yoke heavy, but make thou it somewhat lighter for us. Thus shalt thou say unto them, My little finger shall be thicker than my father's loins. Both of these verses, if they in fact were both there, would read that his little finger would be thicker than his father's entire sickly body, and not specifically referring to his loins. Hill of the foreskins. In Joshua 5.3, Joshua made him sharp knives and circumcised the children of Israel at the hill of the foreskins. Nope, sorry, this verse originally simply named a location, Gibeah Paraloth, not a hill stacked with foreskins. And last but not least, King James himself is referred to as a nursing father. In many of the King James Bibles, we find an introduction right after the title page. That too has been changing, and now it is called the Epistle Dedicatory. The dedication described is not directed to God either, but rather to the high and mighty Prince James. In the final paragraph, notice the typical lowercase h used to refer to God when not by name, while all the other pronoun references to King James are capitalized. That is how the King James Version used to be with all pronouns and definite articles referring to God, but no more. Other God-like attributes are given to King James, such as, Your very name is precious among men. Their eye doth behold you, capital Y, with comfort, and they bless you, capital Y, in their hearts, as they sanctified person, capital P, who under God is the immediate author of their true happiness. That is referring to the mere man, King James himself. He too is described as a most tender and loving nursing father. We are at the end of time when John was told that the protection to scriptures would be lifted. Our Bibles are reflecting that Satan now has clear permission to not only change what our Bibles say, but change it in vulgar and blasphemous and even homosexual ways. Beware of what you let your children read. I look forward to talking to you next time. The Lord bless you.